Right, welcome back to this Grundig Melody Boy. We're going to see if we can um, get it going. First thing, obviously, is to check none of the wires missing, um, or sorry, none of the wires are loose, which I've already done. So, um, you know, any obvious things. Um, it requires six 1.5 volt batteries, so we're going to calculate how much voltage we need because it's too hard. So we're going to go. We're going to put our slide rule on here and we're going to count 6 times 1.5 equals 9. And that's a bit out actually. Hang on. 1.5. going to put the thing on 6. And the answer is 9 volts. Brilliant. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but um, I quite like using these old slide rules. We were amongst the last to use them really at school in um, technical drawing back in the mid 1970s, um, just before calculators became um, uh, affordable. I think my first calculator was a Casio M1. And um, I've got quite a collection of slide rules, I just like using them. This one's a simplex rule, i.e., it's only printed on one side. This is a Blundell um, 802 log log slide rule. So, the sort of thing that would be used at school in the 1960s, 1970s. I'll just show you another one or two. This one's an American made picket. Um, and the astronauts in uh, Apollo 11 actually took a picket, uh, I think it was an NS500. Was it no NS N six hundred or whatever it was? Now these are all metal, made in the US, and this one's a duplex rule. Right, it's printed on both sides. This was in pretty much mint condition, or it is now. I cleaned so the screws had gone a bit rusty in there, so I cleaned them up and um, slightly cleaned up this aluminium end caps here. But that's a nice old roll. Still in it. It's probably dates from um, 60 even says on it actually somewhere. 1962. I've got ones even older than this. So these are the sort of things that you know obviously the people designing these radios in front of us would have would have used for um, you know power dissipation and all that sort of stuff. Here you go. Here's another one here. This is a German-made AW Faber. This one dates from 1932, and this is what they call an um, electro rule. So it's used for. Um, engineers working on AC voltage um, equipment really it's got dynamos and all sorts of things on here kilowatts and horsepower made in Bavaria and you can see well you probably can't it just says 6 there and 32 stamp there and that's how these rules were dated so June 1932 and this one's printed on both sides. Actually, you can see it's got a metal slider here for the voltage. And you flip it over. And you've got another set of scales there. So, that's that one. It's good to keep learning other stuff. And this is, this is a real top well, I'm saying it's a top grade one, but it was. Um, this is a Thornton Pick 221. This is the most complicated um, slide rule that Thornton made. Thornton were a manufacturer over here in the UK, one of the top ones of slide rules. And if you don't, I don't know if you remember how to do it, but um, if you want to do two times two, for example, you've got a C scale here and a D scale here, 
and that's the uh, that's the left index, which is the one. Um, that's called the left index. And if you want to do two times two, let's make it easy. You'd slide your C, your index on C, i.e. the one on C, to the two on the D scale, and run your cursor up to the two on the C scale, and your answer would be on the D scale, which is obviously four. And obviously two and a half times two equals five. <coughs> Excuse me, and so on and so on and so on. And you can you know start using logarithms and sines and tangents and cosines. It's got all sorts on this. I wouldn't say I'm very mathematical, but um these are quite fun to use instead of a calculator. You just have to remember they don't know about decimal points. Right, so we need 9 volts. So we'll get ourselves some croc leads. Um, I think that's FM, which is the easiest one. We'll hear a hiss from the amplifier, if nothing else. Right, and I will take my own advice and put some packing over that speaker before I ruin it. Right, so that's the positive end the battery connections and here's the negative end so let's put them there right let's put it back so you can see it right I've got a 9 volt battery it's negative and positive turn the volume down right that should work. Wish me luck. Actually, I wonder if the... It won't come on till it's... Right. Wish me luck. I'm just... Um, going to turn it on. Oh! <laughs> of course it works. Ha! <laughs> I've not even got the area out. Oh well, there we go. There's the diet. <coughs> Excuse me, coughing. I've still got a cold. Dial bulb works. I think that should be a long wave. That'll be BBC Radio 4. Medium wave works. Short wave. Something there. Yeah. That's static and interference, so I'm assuming that works. Well, that's good isn't it? <laughs> I wonder what the chap was on about, perhaps he, perhaps he hadn't had the batteries and uh, let me just take the little battery out. Perhaps he tried to plug um, a mains lead into it and um, that's what he thought it wasn't working. Although the other reason is um, just to get himself out of a hole he he didn't know if it was working or not and so to save me coming back um, and so oh, it isn't working etc etc you know as an eBay eBay buyer perhaps he just covered his own back by saying it didn't work but anyway it works <laughs> right um, I must say once one thing I did notice when I was looking it over and comparing it to my other chassis is I think on the AC side and I did have a quick good look around the AC side and I'll show you something 
the transformer looks as if it's got quite hot uh, for something non-metal that it, it looks a bit crispy around here and um, I touched these bits and noticed there was some black coming off on my fingers as if I uh, can see that as if it got a bit smoky and um, yeah now this thing down here is the fuse holder there's a I think it's a 800 milliamp fuse and 160 milliamp fuse and then it goes off to the board and the metal rectifier sits around here <coughs> so um, I think we should try it on AC but one thing I did notice is, um, I don't know if you can see, let me get a torch oops right let me get a torch I don't know if you can see in there there's some metal fingers now that's the battery disconnect for when you put a mains lead in well, let me show you so when you put a mains lead in there should be a little cam inside here that I guess disconnects the battery circuit like that it should push these these fingers onto the contacts in there and it isn't there's something missing another one has got a little plastic bit in there so I'm not sure whether converting this to AC power would um, cause any, or sorry, trying to put it on AC power with batteries installed would actually do it any harm. I need to look at the circuit a bit more carefully. So what we'll do is we'll try it on AC power and see what happens. If there's smoke we shall have a laugh. Let's, um, let's put it on medium long wave. Let's put it on medium wave. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And um, we can have a go on batteries. Um, you know, unless the transformer's cooked or anything. Hmm. Well, let's try it. If it goes bang, we'll have something fun to look at. Right. Dial lights on. But there's no sound coming out of speakers. Nothing at all. So transformer might have fried or the bridge rectifiers failed just see well, let me just um, turn this off a minute and pull the pull the mains Let's see if we can get a meter in here like the ground plane there right so all right let's plug that in let's put this on to volts I don't know if you can see that no metal at the back there let's um, see if there's anything happening turn it on first Not a lot. Doesn't look like there's um, there's any voltage getting to the board at all. Nothing. Six volts there. 
That's funny. Right. So that's something that uh, we know isn't working. It doesn't work on AC power. Not I didn't show you that, did I? Sorry, I didn't realise that wasn't in focus. Oh, well, looking at the meter. So I'm just going on the on the circuit ground and just six six and a bit volts there. Doesn't seem enough actually. Hmm. The bridge rectifier's around here on the circuit board. Hmm. Six point well, let's just say seven volts. Six point nine volts. You'd think that would be working, wouldn't you? I wonder if that battery cutout's got anything to do with it. The fact that it isn't actually cutting the battery out. Shouldn't do though, should it? Hmm. Anyway, at least we know it works on batteries. Let's pull this out. Right, we know it works on batteries, so that's the start. We can look at the AC side later. I've got to be honest, if I'm going to use this radio, I'm going to use it in the kitchen. And all my kitchen radios run off batteries anyway, so... Um, I suspect I could put some sort of blanking plate over here so no one tries to put an AC line in. Right. So, just flip this over. This meter I've got actually, this is, um, this is a Metrix meter. Um, Metrix are a French company of quality meters and they have an eBay store. <coughs> And I bought this for like 35 quid or something, and it's, it's really good. Really good meter. You know, the metrics are usually highly priced. Right, so let's swing this round. Um, get zoom in on the. This is the power supply circuit. Um, so this must these these lead these oh, huh, excuse me right these leads here the black and yellow one they look as if they come from the battery terminals up into here and then it's disconnected by those little spring contact tags the little spring fingers and then they provide power hmm. Hmm. And they go off to the. That's the bridge rectifier there. That yellow box. Hmm. Interesting. And annoying trying to follow a circuit like this. These must be the volume control wires, speaker wires coming from the amp. So that looks like the power into the board. I wonder if it does. Hmm. Right, I think I'm going to check these out, although the bit's missing, so it's all rather irrelevant actually but at least we know it works so next thing to do I guess is um, start getting some of these spider webs and dust out and see where we go from there but um, glad it's working and now I'm going to do some uh, sine and cosine measurements and um, pie and stuff like that that I haven't done for 40 odd years. Right, thanks for watching.